Welcome to the opening round of the 2012 KTM European Junior Cup from Assen in the Netherlands. Expanded championship this year, rising from six races to eight, and the series will move from Assen to uh, two Italian rounds, Monza, followed by Mazzano, then on to Spain in Aragon. We then move to Eastern Europe with the Grenoble round in the Czech Republic before going to the uh, British circuit at Silverstone before heading back to the Nürburgring and ending the season at Manicor. So the grid forming up then after uh, an interesting qualifying session, we saw mixed conditions and it's the Dutch wildcard rider Rob Hartog, the number six machine that will be lining up on the front row of the grid. Latvian rider Garish Roshkalns takes second ahead of uh, Lucas Pasek, who rides the uh, one of the Bogdanka machines and Brit Jamie Patterson rounds out the front row of the grid. 20 riders uh, from 12 nations will be taking part in the opening race of the championship, reduced to seven laps, which is just shy of 32 kilometres. Other riders uh, of note, second row of the grid, made up by the Australian rider, uh, that is Sepp Scacella, and uh, former 125 racer. Uh, spent quite a bit of time in Italy with uh, Andrea Iannone, the uh, Moto2 rider, did Sepp. And uh, Sepp will be looking to uh, kickstart his championship uh, in fine style here at the historic Assen circuit. Josh Harland, uh, many of you will remember from last year at the Money Core round uh, when the championship uh, was running the 250 machines and Josh Harland debuting last year in the championship and taking victory at Money Core. Ahead of Jake Lewis, who uh, in the off-season, Jake returned to his native uh, New Zealand where he wrapped up the Supersport Championship of New Zealand. Gaston Garcia is the, uh, the first Spaniard in seventh uh, ahead of Lucas uh, Wimmer, and uh, that is the second row of the grid. Other riders that uh, should be really watched out for during this race, uh, Jean-Francois de Moulin, another rider that uh, did contest the championship last year. He's on the third row of the grid. Brandon Key, who uh, this weekend has uh, had a couple of off-track ex uh, excursions. He's starting 14th on the grid. And uh, the likeable uh, Norwegian rider, Stinius Viking Odegaard, rounds out uh, 16th position on the fourth row. So the pace car following the riders off then on the warm-up lap here at Assen. 4.5 kilometre circuit, uh, 11 left-hand corners, six right-hand corners, and uh, the longest straight here is the, uh, the back straight, just under 600 metres. So the championship then, uh, an integral part now of the World Superbike Championship, and uh, the riders now just making their way through the, uh, the new part of the circuit, Assen. As many of you uh, regular racers will, uh, will remember, race followers will remember, the Assen circuit shortened uh, a few years ago. And we now have uh, quite a stop-start section through the first corner of Harbocht into Magic and then uh, into the left-handed hairpin, which leads the guys out onto Struben and the back straight. Leading them round then on the warm-up lap and uh, number 23 there on the, uh, the KTM 690 Duke machines. That's Adrian Pasek from Poland and uh, riders... Uh, Nerves and uh, I guess really got a lot of expectation from all of these guys. Uh, they're putting a lot into this. Some of them travelling, as I say, from the other side of the world as the riders now make their way through into the second part of the lap. This is where the circuit opens up and becomes uh, quite fast and flowing. And this is going to be a hard one to predict. The top five riders in qualifying covered by less than a second. But I think uh, on paper you would have to say that uh, Rob Hartog is looking strong. Only got the call up to ride in this championship uh, literally a few days ago, did, uh, did Rob. And Rob Hartog is the nephew of uh, former Grand Prix star. Uh, that is, of course, Will Hartog. Uh, and uh, Will, uh, a regular in the Grand Prix championship of yesteryear. So dark clouds overhead. And uh, we have seen uh, mixed conditions for the two superbike races earlier today. And uh, that first epic battle uh, in the World Superbike Championship cut short by rain, uh, which involved about nine riders. But... Um, as the riders come round then to complete the lap, let's just run through some of the other riders that are going to be taking part in this year's championship. As I said, we have 12 nations making up the series this year. We've got riders from France, Spain, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, of course, uh, in the shape of Rob Hartog has taken pole position. We've got a couple of Polish riders in there. Brandon Key, he's uh, obviously made the, uh, the trek across from stateside in the US of A. Jake Lewis, I've already mentioned, the reigning super sport champion of, uh, of New Zealand. We've got a Ukrainian, uh, Mikhalchik, uh, the number 55 uh, rider. He's uh, riding the wind racing KTM Duke. Um, Javi Orellana, uh, Gaston Garcia and Christian Vidal are the Spanish riders. Uh, fourth Spanish rider is Sergio Mazanek and uh, he is riding for the SMG uh, KTM team. So here we go then, an expectant uh, crowd looking forward to what promises to be an exciting opening seven lap race for the 2012 KTM European Junior Cup. And uh, 
garish rash counts. There are uh, all kinds of uh, antics on the grid, and uh, I'm not sure what uh, what exactly he's doing or praying to. But uh, here we go then. So we get ready for the opening round of the championship, and uh, you can see the riders now getting a little bit twitchy. The flag marshal moves away then to the off opposite side of the, the the track. There we look now for the lights. When the lights go out, this will be the start of the 2012 European Junior Cup, the KTM Junior Cup, and they're holding them a long time now. There the we go, red lights, and it is go, go, go. And it's a great start by Rob Hartog, uh, lifts the front wheel, and uh, here we go then, 20 riders down in towards turn one into Harbock, and who's going to get the whole shot? Is it Rob Hartog? Uh, one of the riders uh, very, very late on the brakes further back, but do they all get safely around? And I think they do. And uh, it looks to me like Gaston Garcia is up in about sixth position, and uh, the riders just finding their way around. But it looks like it's Hartog that's uh, made the whole shot and made the break. As uh, there is Brandon Key just uh, going around the outside as they go into the hairpin. And uh, seven laps, as we say, ahead of the guys. Into Struben. Be careful. Left-hand tyre. And uh, one of the riders just getting left a little bit at the back. But I'm sure that uh, he will catch up. And they're all safely round. Heading then onto the back straight, and uh, that certainly looks like it is Hartog making a break. Sepp Scarcella looks to have made a really good start. Bumping and boring, they go down the back straight, and oh, that's a bit bit harsh as they go in towards the uh, end of that straight, and that looks also as if Josh Harland uh, has made a good start as well. Gaston Garcia as up on the inside into fourth position, and uh, we move round now. This is uh, an exciting race, as we would expect. That's four corners in and already we're seeing places, and just a little bit hot there, and that looked a bit uh, like it was Josh Harland, but it is Hartog at the front. Rob Hartog, the Moto Voodoo wildcard rider. And I'll explain a little bit about the, uh, the Moto Voodoo uh, wildcard rider. Simon Crafar, the former Grand Prix star, heavily involved with the series this year. And uh, they will be picking a wildcard rider um, at each of the rounds. And uh, the wildcard rider um, will be of the nationality as uh, bumping and boring they go as they come through uh, Steckenbelt, on towards De Bult now uh, and through Dukashlov. This is where the riders build it up. And now uh, Hartog is making a break for it as the other guys trip over themselves in towards us again. Four abreast as they go through the left-hand side, up into second place. Uh, that looked like the uh, the number 58, or was it 60? I don't think it was Wimmer. Wimmer's up into second as they come round to complete the end of the first lap. And again, do they all get it round? So far, so good. That's Gaston Garcia uh, around the outside there, and he's up into fifth position. We go. Number 10 is Jamie Patterson, just hooked onto the back of these guys as here we go then into the second lap. That's one lap down, and it's Hartog leading it from Wimmer. Sepp Scarcella, the Australian, and uh, that's Adrian Pasek, and Pasek moves up from fourth into third, but already over a second clear. Jean-Francois de Moulin's had a fantastic start from 14th, the Frenchman. He knows the circuit from last year, and he's just ahead of uh, Gaston Garcia and Arthur Wilbersky. And uh, Jake Lewis, uh, well, Jake not really, really happy, I don't think. Is up on the inside. Oh, not quite. And that's getting a bit frantic there between uh, between the two uh, the two riders as we come on to the back straight. Jamie Patterson in ninth, Gareth Roskans in tenth, and Christian Vidal. Well, Christian Vidal uh, had a torrid time in qualifying. He was on the back row of the grid uh, along with, uh, with Kaz Hashmi, but... Um, He's made a good start. Number 23, that thought about it on the inside. That is, uh, of course, Adrian Pasek. And uh, lots of people uh, do uh, think that Adrian Pasek should have a good season. He's part of the Bogdanka squad. And uh, those of you familiar with the World Supersport Championship will know that Bogdanka have six riders in this championship. And it looks like the, uh, the two battling riders that are catching up. And uh, that looks to me as if Rob Hartog is being caught a little bit. 47 is Scarcella. And uh, Scarcella, very confident young rider and a uh, very interesting character, very colourful character and brings uh, brings a lot of uh, enthusiasm to the, the championship. And I'm not sure what line he's taking there, but um, these riders, up and coming talent, as we say, from around the globe. And uh, this promises to be an exciting championship. And they have Pasek. Pasek has bridged that gap. It's now a breakaway of three as they come round to complete lap two. Hell of a battle going on behind us. And that's Jean-Francois de Moulin, who's moved up now into fifth place. And as I was about to say, de Moulin qualifying back, uh, well, way back, it seemed, as through on the inside uh, again goes Scarcella. So Scarcella and Wimmer. Oh, and down, down, down. And Scarcella's gone down. Well, did he clip the grass there? I think he possibly did. And just as I was bigging him up, the commentator's curse, I was about to say that... Uh, a colourful character and uh, one of uh, one of uh, a number of riders making the transition several thousands of miles. And now uh, I'm sure we'll get a replay of that. But that looked to me like it was Scarcella that just clipped the paint. And uh, it was indeed. It comes up on our timing screens. The number 47, Giuseppe Scarcella. And uh, Scarcella has bitten the dust in the opening round of the championship. And that's not the way that he wanted his series to start. 
OK, so meanwhile, at the front, we've got a breakaway of three. It's Rob Hartog. He only got the call up a couple of days ago that he would be racing in this championship. And Pasek's not wasting any time. Gets in the draft and pulls out. It's Hartog from Pasek. Lucas Wimmer's doing a great job hanging on the back of these. As Jean-Francois de Moulin uh, is also now. And it's Pasek who hits the front. So we're halfway around the third lap. And uh, Jean-Francois de Moulin now will be looking to bridge that gap. Gaston Garcia... Is, uh, is hanging on in sixth position. Arthur Wilberski, and uh, well, this is a looking really, really good. Jake Lewis now finding his feet, and he's dragging Jamie Patterson with him, the uh, the Irish rider. And uh, Jamie Patterson, uh, of course, started this one on the front row of the grid. Jose Orellana, and uh, oh, you just see it there. It looks to me that's a replay of Scarcella and Gaston Garcia, very, very lucky indeed not to get caught up in that one. Just a little bit too hot into the chicane. Corner, which has taken uh, many, uh, many a famous rider, Pierre, Francesco, Killy, of course, and Foggy. And uh, oh, and Hartog hits back, and the crowd are loving this. And uh, Hartog hits back. It's a three-way battle, and uh, Wimmer on the back of them as well. So the three riders, and they're definitely away with this one into the chicane, then to complete lap number three. And it's Hartog from Pasek and Lucas Wimmer, the Austrian, helped by KTM Austria, the number fifty-eight machine. Over the line we go then, uh, into the fourth lap and uh, down into uh, into turn one. And uh, Pasek hits back, Pasek hits back on the inside. This is turning into a right old dust-up. This promises to be, uh, as I said, the KTM European Junior Cup. These guys really are the stars of the future. And what a great championship uh, that uh, the guys have put together here. Simon Rayner and Jerry Bryce. Um, absolutely instrumental in bringing this championship to the fore. And they're also involved themselves with uh, with the Superstock uh, 600 uh, team. And uh, a lot of these riders will be looking to get into Superstock 600 and uh, obviously then moving on through the series into uh, World Supersport and World Superbike. So, Pasek hits the front then. Hartog uh, is fighting back again round the outside. And he's brave, you've got to say that. The, uh, the youngster from the Netherlands, and uh, around the outside, that's the second lap in a row. Will Pasek sit behind him? And this lap he does. So it's Hartog as we go round. And we're a half race distance now, halfway round uh, the, the lap. And uh, it's Pasek and Wimmer, as I've said, doing a really, really good job behind them now. De Moulin hits the front of that chasing battle. And it looks to me as, uh, again, Pasek and Hartog are swapping uh, paints and elbowing and again. And this is giving Wimmer every opportunity to keep with them as we go round uh, now, halfway round onto the back section as the riders start building it up. Probably one of the fastest parts of the circuit. And uh, Oh, and Wimmer's down, Wimmer's down. Wimmer gets it absolutely wrong. Just again, commentator's curse. I was saying it gives him a chance to hang up, and I wonder whether he just got a little bit unsighted there. He runs back to the machine as the other riders, and he picks it up. Can he get it going again? What an absolute uh, mistake there, and what a shame for uh, the young Austrian. And uh, just as I was saying that, and uh, no, that's it, race over. And uh, Wimmer is the second rider then to bite the dust in the opening round of the championship. That Astro Turf still damp. I mean, you wouldn't think it looking at the camera with the, uh, the sun now beating down on the historical Aston circuit <laughs> as the two riders again at the front swap paint and it's Pasek back to the front. What a shame for Wimmer. So he'll be hoping for better luck as the championship moves on to the second round uh, in two weeks' time to Monza. So let's concentrate on Aston then. We've got uh, three laps to go and it's still Hartog from Pasek. You would have to say now, barring a mistake, that uh, it will be one of these that will be on the top step of the podium. Arthur Wilberski, and uh, he's made a great ride through the field up into third position ahead of Jean-Francois de Moulin, Gaston Garcia, and uh, Javi Orellana. That's the two Spaniards battling away. And Josh Harland and Jake Lewis, well, they were locked together in the race last year, weren't they, in, uh, in Manicor, battling it out on the, the 250 yeah. machines. And again, they can't be separate. Just 0.3 of a second separates those two battling uh, youngsters as uh, we now look back. At the battle. Oh, and again, it's arms and legs everywhere. And that's Wilberski and uh, De Moulin. And De Moulin's brave as well. It seems to me that uh, Hartog and De Moulin goes in a bit deep. And uh, Wilberski comes back round the outside. So uh, two battles of two. And uh, this is obviously the battle for third position and the final rostrum position. Looking at it, though, I think it's going to be a bit of a tall order for these two to bridge that gap. Gaston Garcia just in the background there. The Spanish rider, former Moto2 rider, um, of course, uh, in the Spanish Championship, the number 75 uh, Spanish uh, youngster. 
and uh, he is in a comfortable fifth position at the moment. So uh, we concentrate then on this battle. Keep off the curbs, guys, and uh, they certainly do, and it's Demoulin and Wilderski. Demoulin, again, uh, his sister actually uh, raced in the championship with him last year, and uh, some great rides by uh, the two siblings, but this year it's uh, all eyes on the Frenchman Jean-Francois Demoulin. We've already seen earlier in the, in the day the Frenchman Sylvain Guintoli go on to take his first World Superbike victory, and uh, well, it certainly seems with the likes of Jules Cluzel in World Supersport that uh, we have a number of French riders uh, that are doing the business in this year's championship. Then two laps to go and still the battle at the front rages. It's Pasek now, 0.6 of a second ahead of Hartog. And these two are really still at it. This is for a podium, boys. Uh, remember, it's a long championship, though. We've got to make sure that uh, you're getting points on the board. And that will be the, uh, the thoughts going through the minds of Giuseppe Scarcello and Lucas Wimmer, two of the guys that uh, crashed out early in this race. Let's look back then, Haaland and Jake Lewis, and uh, Haaland again uh, just edging in front. He's got about a second gap now. Uh, other British rider is uh, Jamie Patterson. He's up to ninth. And uh, Simon Kashmarek, uh, another one of the Bogdanka boys, he's up now into 10th position ahead of Christian Vidal. Stinius Viking Odegaard, uh, likeable uh, Norwegian rider, and uh, he, of course, the son of uh, Terry Odegaard, who uh, is a commentator for Eurosport. As we now pick up the battle once again, as we go into the... Uh, last third or then of this race and uh, I did say at the start of it that it was going to be exciting and it is exciting and again up on the inside that looks like Wilberski now is going back in front Demoulin in fact now back in front no quarter asked or given and we've got about a lap and a half to go and Gaston Garcia has now been caught for fifth we've got three battles of two and uh, I think as this season goes on and these guys just get a little bit more confidence a little bit more used to the KTM Duke 690 machines we're going to be seeing some great battles as again Number 27 there, up on the inside, that's Javi Orellana and the two Spaniards and uh, Gaston Garcia straight back under him. And you can tell that uh, Gaston there, uh, number 75, on with the red leathers, he's used to uh, racing in Motor 2 and also, uh, of course, uh, racing in Supercross. And uh, you can tell just by the way that, uh, that he's riding that uh, that is the case. Here we come then, the leading two are on to the final lap. And it's Wilberski and De Moulin. And I'm not sure who I'd like to put my money on. At the front, though, it is, of course, the uh, Polish rider, Adrian Pasek, who now has a little bit of a gap. He's uh, got about a second on Hartog. Fairy tale for Hartog in qualifying as De Moulin slips back up the inside into third position. And this could come down to that last chicane. So uh, let's look out for some shenanigans there. But uh, we're literally halfway around now on the last lap. And what a great race this has been. As I said, uh, seven laps here at Assen. And uh, the European Junior Cup doesn't fail to disappoint. Number 23, then, he looks over his shoulder. He goes down the back straight. Is this going to be a debut victory for Adrian Pasek from Poland? And what a great way for him to uh, start his championship. Looked like there was a back marker just about to come in shot. I think that was Loris Hunt, but uh, let's see if Loris gets out of the way. But what an absolutely methodical and calculated ride by Pasek. Credit to, uh, to Hartog, of course, as well, uh, holding on for a fantastic second. And uh, he's going to be happy with that in front of his home crowd while the battle goes on behind. So we're about five corners away now, then. This is going to be the debut race victory for uh, the youngster from Poland. Onto the back straight, keeping it nice and steady. Through the little right-handed kink. And this is where they build up the fastest part uh, of the circuit. Through the dipper into the long left-hander then. This is where we saw uh, riders tumbling in the superbike race. But uh, he's got one corner to go now. Keep it steady. He knows he's got this one in the bag now. And what a great ride as we come through the chicane. And victory then in the opening round of the championship. He looks behind him, punches the air, and it's victory and he's uh, absolutely delighted with that, and rightly so. Points to the team, the team hanging over the pit wall. Great second position then for Rob Hartog, and we focus our attention now back for third, and uh, it's De Moulin. No, it's not. De Moulin's lost out on the uh, run to the line, and it's Arta Wilberski who will come through and take the final podium position. And now uh, that's Bob Danker, one and three. Well, uh, great for the team. De Moulin looks happy with fourth. 
And uh, oh, and there's been a crash. There's been another crash on the final corner. That looked like Gaston Garcia. Well, uh, just as I was saying, it looked like a calculated ride. And he looked so steady uh, with that position. Uh, it looks like he's gone. And uh, Josh Harlan's gone missing as well. Well, I'm not sure what's happening on this last lap. But uh, just as I was about to say, great showing by the guys that, uh, for keeping it upright. And it's all gone wrong on the last lap for a couple of them. As uh, we now uh, look a little bit further back at uh, some of the other riders just completing the, uh, the circuit. And Jake Lewis uh, will come across the line in sixth position. As we go around then onto the back part of the circuit and battles all the way through the field as uh, we look further back. So uh, here we have, and uh, this is a great battle going on. This is for 14th position and that's Kaz Hashmi. And uh, Kaz, not the ideal weekend, but he's going for it up the inside and Kaz goes through. So uh, Kaz and the number 26, Kaz, uh, Sergio Mazanek, and this is for the final points. And Kaz Hashmi comes through to take 14th position and uh, he'll be happy with that. And Mazanek... Uh, as we go into the chicane, didn't want to fight that one too much, but uh, he will collect 15th position and the last point uh, scoring ride then across the line. And that's all of the, uh, the finishers then uh, completing the race. Great opening round of the European KTM Junior Cup. As I said, uh, it was a fantastic victory for Adrian Pasek on the Bogdanka KTM machine. Fantastic debut uh, while cutting ride for Rob Hartog. And will we see Rob in any of the other rounds? I think at, uh, at present it was just the wild card ride that Rob was going to have. But uh, it would be great if we could see the uh, the Dutch youngster uh, in a few other uh, races. And uh, Pasek uh, nearly losing it on the slowing down that day. He wants to be a bit careful with that one. But uh, here we have then the classified results from the opening round. It's Pasek from Hartog, Wilberski from Jamul and Jamie Patterson. And, uh, of course, Jake Lewis running out the top six. Stinius uh, Viking Odegaard got 11th. Uh, Brandon Key, who uh, suffered, uh, I think, three or four crashes over the weekend, he picks up 13th position as well. So that is the classified riders. The next round of the championship will uh, take these guys to Italy at uh, the uh, famous Monza circuit. Uh, great circuit for slipstreaming. And uh, that promises to be a really, really good race. Aralana there uh, picking up eighth just behind Garcia, who uh, I think remounted um, ahead of uh, Vidal in tenth. And uh, as we said there, Kaz Hashmi uh, just pipping uh, Sergio Mazanek for uh, the final point. And that uh, pretty much rounds out. You can actually follow the European KTM Junior Cup uh, on Superbike News Television as uh, celebrations from uh, Pasek and uh, well, you, uh, you, you get the idea that he's done that before, ladies and gents. But uh, as I was just saying, you can follow the KTM European Junior Cup uh, online at uh, the EuropeanJuniorCup.com. You can also follow uh, the in-depth uh, on-track and off-track action uh, with Superbike TV. And that is SBKNewsTV.com.uk. And the podium celebration just about to happen in the background. And these riders as Pasek takes on uh, the victory. So... Podium celebrations. I'm not sure that these guys actually get given uh, any alcoholic beverages, but it's everyone has them. And you can hear the crowd, they're pleased with that. He looks happy enough uh, to take uh, second position, but uh, the championship leader now by five points, 25 points in the bag. And that is for Adrian Pasek. So, as I was just saying, you can check out uh, all of the action from the European Junior Cup at sbknewstv.co.uk, where we uh, will be bringing you uh, all of the race action. Junior Cup, the World Superbike Championship, the World Super Sport Championship, and of course the two Superstop Championships as well. If you're wanting other news, of course, uh, superbikenews.co.uk uh, brings you uh, all of the other insights, uh, not just from the European Junior Cup, but all of the uh, action uh, from all of the championships uh, around the world. So uh, that's it then, ladies and gents. Uh, my name has been Michael Hill. I hope you've enjoyed this race, the opening round of the championship. We will be bringing you the second round of the championship from Monza and uh, all of the remaining rounds as the championship goes on. The Polish national anthem, which I have never heard before, rings out. We're going to sign off.